In this video, I'm going to go ahead and start breaking apart that engine right over there behind me and just start taking everything apart. I'm going to work my way up from the removing the valve, um, the timing covers, and then removing the heads, and we can get to see inside the block, the cylinder wall, see how much damage it, there really is. In the last video, I went ahead and removed all the accessories, the headers, the AC compressor, the starter, all that stuff. And I also removed the valve, the valve covers. So now I'm going to go ahead and start removing the rear timing cover. So obviously this, this, and the main central one right here. And then we'll be able to go ahead and take off the heads and really see what damage is in each cylinder wall. Because we know for sure cylinders one it got the worst out of it. And cylinders three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I mean eight, not nine. I can't count. So um, see if there is any more damage, um, visual damage on the inside. Because in the last video I didn't see there is no um, damage or anything bulging out as in as we can see in cylinder one here you know obviously there's definitely damage with cylinder one but as far as the other cylinders i don't see anything so i'm going ahead and start removing those covers here is the timing components um so even though yeah what happened happened but at least the timing is still good um see when i did this um gosh i can't remember the miles that i did when i did the timing myself i actually posted the miles that I had the timing when I did it and then what the mile is right now um, so you can see I just marked it with the little paint marker pen so it looks like it didn't you know get this you know it's still aligned you know that's good to know that you know I did it right which is you know at least a good thing you know so obviously I do have the updated RS4 tensioner this is the one that's prone to break um, I have not seen anything about because um, this is also not um, the OEM. This is for the RS4. So both of these guides right here are for the RS4. So I got I got them both. I did it right the first time. And um I have not seen the plastic because these are originally plastic with the with this platform, the B6, B7. And as we come around, if we look at the cams, they're still good aligned how they should be on each on, both, on all four of them so that's good the next thing I need to do in order to remove the heads is to remove this portion of the timing right here and this portion of the timing the, um, both mechanical adjusters are off the car um, I went ahead and removed the, the, ten the chain tensioners and yep yeah. So that I was able to nice and go ahead. Um, so when you do remove these um, bolts right here, these are one-time use because um, they these are supposed to, they they stretch when you um, tighten them to the certain spec that you need to do it to. Um, and when you do do this, um, you need to do two things. One thing, so there's like a crank pin that you um, unscrew and you put like a kind of like a lock pin that that holds the crank in, 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 in the same spot while you're doing that you have to have somebody over here on the other side of the cam with a, I believe there's a one inch right here I can't remember but I believe it is a one inch holding up against it as you're loosening or tightening it whichever way you're doing it but because this piston right here um, is holding my crank in, in place so there's really no need to have somebody here holding it with the wrench with the one inch wrench or having that crank pin I was just telling you about so I was able to go ahead and just loosen that up so here it is um, when you do take this apart just remember these chains do not get them mixed up with this chain because I believe because one chain is has more links than the other and here are the mechanical adjusters um, so I did get the ones from JHM so I'm gonna go ahead and um, break these apart and obviously you break them apart with the, these five um, torque screws that are on the back I'm gonna go ahead and break these apart and see you know how good um, if it did wallow out um, again I'll post that picture uh, a picture of what I mean and then um, hopefully it didn't it shouldn't because you know there's these are supposed to not do that 
in theory they're not supposed separated the mechanical adjuster so before I move on to here here are the guts so you know here's this this you know rotates like it should and right here there's a little spring activation so behind the spring there's like a little plastic looking washer thing you don't want to lose that so um, yeah so this is moves freely um, so this thing right here there's like a little I don't know how to explain it that right there connects to this black dot and this thing right here is what goes to right here so this is what is prone to I guess wallowing out if that is the correct term so um, I mean just by visual look it looks in still new condition um, I don't see any signs that evolve anywhere so that's a good that's a good thing you know and I'll post somewhere up here the miles that I've driven with these I don't know what the, what the miles are what the mile is on th out of the top of my head but yeah so that will be the mileage that I've driven with these new JHM mechanical adjusters and they definitely held up so far so I'll definitely be reusing these um, for the new engine so I'll be sending these off to AM tune um, since these are still fairly new so I'll be sending the middle compartment you know the driver side and the passenger side and then obviously the um, mechanical adjusters now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the heads so to remove the heads there are 10 um, bolts that connect the heads to the blocks and so they're right here so it's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and just an FYI these are one-time use bolts you don't use this for the next build or if you remove them you gotta buy new bolts because these are gonna be torqued to a specific um, spec and they stretch to just like these bolts right here they're the same thing just one time use only so I encountered a little hiccup to and when it comes to removing the cylinder heads um, the heads I mean so in order to do that you need a triple square and an extension but socket that I have does not fit so what I need is a longer one of these so I have to go and find myself a longer triple square socket in order to reach down to that bolt so for right now um, this is where I'm gonna stop on this side and I'm gonna go ahead what I did to this side I'm obviously gonna do all this you know remove all this all that stuff so in the while I'm waiting to find where a longer um, triple square is have some good news the tool finally arrived a few days ago so this is the correct one so it's an M10 um, long triple square socket so when you do um, start removing the bolts here they are gonna squeak on you really loud so that's perfectly normal so here is what one of the bolts look like so you have threads right there and then you have another second set of threads right there so again these are just one-time use here is the driver side of the heads um, so if you look down below these two valves are your exhaust and these two right here are your intake so cylinder four um, looks pretty normal cylinder five same thing here I do have a pile of um, puddle of oil so I don't know if that was due to the fact of what happened with the water lock it is oil because I, you know, I rubbed it with my hands. Um, I don't see that it's with water. Maybe there's like a thin layer of water. Um, there are some scores, you know, um, around the cylinder walls, and this one I really can't check. Um, so I don't know. This oil was when I removed the head; it just leaked. Cause um, yeah. So we'll we'll see. So now that the driver's side is, we can go ahead and go over to the passenger side now. Here is the passenger side. And here's cylinder one and two so you can tell there is definitely some rust right here happening as compared to you know I didn't see any signs of rust on these four cylinders nor on these two right here just on these two right here so let's go ahead and look at that block now so here is cylinder four um, normal wear um, don't see anything suspicious cylinder three and your cylinder two look at that that is some rust going on and then the worst as mentioned cylinder one so there is a pile of just rusty water now 
And so that leads to, so after seeing this, I'm pretty sure this is just the oil from when I was removing the heads and just leaked in there when I was removing the heads. But yeah, that looks pretty gnarly. Before I try to start figuring out how to wait to um, turn the block upside down, I'm gonna go ahead and start um, just organizing here in the garage, putting things away, labeling them, putting them in bags and whatnot, throwing things away that need to be thrown away. Do a little bit of organizing before I take more things apart and have more screws just all over the place. As you can see, you know, I got this stuff, you know, that stuff. Now I got to do something with the heads. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and clean these heads. Um, so the only thing to remove the valves, um, I need a like a valve like a valve spring compressor, which a tool that I do not have. Um, when I did the timing before, I got that um, that little sp valve spring compressor borrowed from a buddy of mine back in Colorado. So um, so right now I don't I don't you know I'm not I drive away to his house, so I'm gonna have to um, either get my own so I can fully disassemble the heads you know give it a good clean and then save it for or maybe sell it I don't know yet what I'm planning on doing with the heads yet I went ahead and cleaned both the heads wrapped it up and yeah so I'm gonna store these away and I'll see what I want to do with these later in the in the future if I'm gonna sell them or just hold on to them I'm gonna go ahead and remove the rest of it just strip it all out and then just store it away and then after that I'm going to be able to flip it upside down and start um, taking it apart from the oil pan. All the timing components are completely off now with the only exception I still have the bolts on for the time being. So now I'm going to go ahead and be able to flip the engine upside down and start um, removing the oil pan and work my way up to the center of the engine. I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. Um, I didn't get as far as I wanted to, but I think it is a good stopping point for now because um, when I make these videos, I try to be within like the 11 to 14 minute range. And I try not to go too, too much because I don't want to, you know, make these videos too long. So um, in the next video, I'm going to go ahead, like I, I mentioned before, um, flip the engine upside down and just start removing the oil pan and then just from there I just work my way to the center of the engine. What I do when I'm editing these videos, whenever, um, whatever I record in a day, whatever, I go ahead, when I get the, you know, free time again, um, go to the computer and edit the video. So I have an idea how long these videos are, um, going how long these videos are as i'm editing so that's how i'm able to tell when i'm like in between that you know 11 to 14 minute range that i that i'm trying to um achieve so um so because i don't like to record all these clips and wait till the very end to you know go through all these clips and you know put them in and you start editing because it's, it's very time consuming so um i try not to overwhelm myself when editing these videos. With all that being said, um, this is the end of this video. Um, thank you for watching and hope you guys are learning as as I'm going along with this um, teardown and hope you guys have a good one. Thanks.